They're saying that the test takers must read and respond to questions from a range of texts, from the upper levels of complexity. Um, and there's an increased emphasis, this also is a big driver in my curriculum, on primary sources. So someone mentioned earlier that 18th century language. You know it's going to be there. And we know, mostly from high school, college, wherever we have been reading things, there are phrases in that, 19th, in that 18th century language that you kind of hear all the time as an American, and you have kind of a gut feeling about what it means. So that's something else we'll be addressing. Um, a quick note on, so uh, key advance number two, reading, writing, and speaking grounded in evidence from the text. This is what Marcia was referring to. They do not want to know, I always tell my students, the people who write the GED test, um, I always preface it by saying, I care what you think. We will share for five minutes at the end of class what everybody thinks of this. The GED test people do not care what you think. They want to know the evidence from the text that supports the answer you're choosing. So over and over when you're questioning them, why do you say that? What's your evidence for that? What did you read that made you think that? From the very simplest text. You don't wait for this until your, pre, your GED level class. You want to get them even in a small paragraph from a beginning science reading. Tell me where you get that answer. Support your evidence from something in the text. So there's a lot of examples in that in the activities. I'll show you. The last thing, build knowledge through content-rich nonfiction, not through lecturing them. Um, <laughs> not through talking a lot, let them get the knowledge. And uh, Brittany has a presentation on that after the break today, a, an interesting way of building the content knowledge. Okay, so putting this all together. The design challenge I found in coming up with this 13-week curriculum. Um, I wanted to choose a topic that fit a social studies theme included the social studies content topics and subtopics. Those are all published by the GED testing service. Prepares students to discuss an enduring issue, and they really need to know what that word enduring issue means. That's a key vocabulary word. And how Americans have grappled with that issue as new situations arise what's happening contemporary with the First Amendment, with equal rights, right now, because that's the kind of thing that comes up on the test. And provides the students with the opportunity to develop the skills necessary to read, understand, and analyze primary source, increasingly complex, nonfiction texts, and practice writing. Writing is so important, they have to always be writing in math class, in science class, in reading class, in social studies class, grounded in evidence from a text. It's totally easy, right? <laughs> 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 it's not a difficult challenge. Um, so no, obviously. And as we've been all talking about, and it seems like you're all so aware, um, this is going to require a shift in teaching. And it's hard work, and it's hard work for the teachers, and it's really hard work for the students. And I think you need to prepare the students um, beforehand. We're talking about uh, our orientation we'll be having for the students. That um, you know, an academic talk, it's self-regulated learning. But it's how they are responsible for what they learn, which is actually a good thing. Because if they put effort in, they'll be taking something out. This whole teaching thing is now a collaboration and not kind of that's, top that's down. That's going to be such a newsflash to so many of them. They've, they've been expecting to be fed because, because there were no expectations of them. I mean, that's, that's a shift of the ground underneath the uh, students that, that I've had. I mean, I right, yeah, and you don't know what that background is, but a lot of times, especially if it was a long time ago, this was not the model. Yes? Um, I have a question, and I don't know if, if anyone else 
in the room has run into this problem, but um, you know, when we're speaking of a content-rich nonfiction text, it's difficult to get that. Um, normal, normally, we get access to like regular textbooks, mm -hmm. high school versions of books, maybe middle school versions of texts. And it's really hard to find um, a variety of texts that teachers yeah. can use to then start practicing. Yeah. Because regular texts are so thick and have so much information, it's sort of like too much. Mm -hmm. And then teachers always say to me, well, where can I get more uh, you know, nonfiction or uh, informational texts that I can use? Because all I have is these textbooks. Or right, right. Just this where we very, find that yeah. stuff to practice with. It's really something that I'm, I'm sort of having a problem. Okay. One thing, and then I want to get, I'll, I'll get all these hands. Um, so that's the challenge for teachers. It's harder. Right. It's definitely harder. Um, there are, we're going to go through these activities I keep promising. You'll have a handout that has some beginning sources like this Engage New York, um, <coughs> Achieve the Core. The, um, now I, I faced a lot of this lesson on uh, a website called Excitement, which is from the National Endowment for the Humanities. People know, the whole country, the, uh, let me back up, the advantage we have here is with the Common Core, every teacher in the country is facing the same challenge. Now we were told in this workshop, don't bother buying books that say on the cover, Common Core, because nobody's really ready. There is, there, is no, there is not a textbook out there that is really ready. So putting together you know, the preamble from the Constitution with a letter to the editor that you find in Times in Plain English is the kind of thing we have to start doing. And I'm not, I mean, it's a huge challenge. We're trying to prepare for a new semester. We're just looking through so many times. But yes, Mary. No, that's OK. I was just going to okay. say, we'll probably end up doing our usual violations it's not hard for us to find the text. Right. We end up having to Xerox them. If you yeah. can furnish uh, websites, yeah, with, actually, with the, these, um, stuff, it's fine. the websites I'll tell you today and yeah. other things you'll find with lesson plans, they have gotten permission for classroom use and things. So you're not totally. <laughs> yes. Something very, very useful that um, I found that was very useful uh, for me this past school year was using a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I started collecting different newspapers, especially because I have a different reading levels in my class. <coughs> And uh, with different topic, I laminated. I cut out the the topic from the newspaper. I laminated, and I was saving it. We still have them for next school year because that was one of my challenges. So we don't we don't have any specific resources right. that this and is you what we're going to teach. Is so, yeah. but at the same time, the students loved it, mm -hmm. and they it didn't happen from. Um, one day to another day, but they was, so I had the newspaper ready, so let's find out what will be the news for today. So that kind of activity as part of the warm up into reading, the students enjoy it. Yeah, and I have a suggestion for that, and you'll see this, and we do have to move to our activities, but, so a suggestion just with that, which is a great suggestion, choose the articles and issues carefully. Make them ones that have an enduring issue in social studies so that you're tying them in. You know, if someone, you can do Second Amendment, you can do this all, every day there's First Amendment issues in the paper. And don't be afraid to tell your very beginning students, this is what we call an enduring issue. When Americans read this, they are expected to have this light bulb that goes off in their head and says, that's free speech. You know, we're not, even though they're going to be looking at complex texts, these are not complex ideas. Any adult can understand that what they're talking about in that article is an individual right, or it's a majority right versus a minority right, or so many of these topics. So I would say just um, 
and I'm, I'm getting off my own timeline here, but I even, when you'll see in the activities that when I want them to revise something for proper comma usage, guess what it's about? <laughs> An article that I've rewritten incorrectly, of course, um, that's about the First Amendment, if we were studying the First Amendment, or that's about equal rights in writing class. And then when they're done doing the commas, we say, hey, did people read that? What was that about? Did it present an enduring issue? Ms. Janie, could you yeah. give us like just a few, you sprinkled, but could you give a few okay. examples of enduring issues? Like, just, okay. I mean, you, you know, sprinkled I, it. Let me, okay. I should go forward. But yeah, I, I will give examples. Yes, yes go Real ahead. quick, to go on to the resources, and Jamie has a ton of, a lot of great um, websites for you guys to check out. Another one I just want to make a quick plug for, the museum has fantastic resources. Mm -hmm primary source documents, fantastic stuff, check that out. And one other comment I want to make before Jamie moves on, um, to Catherine's point that for a lot of our students, this is very different. You will get pushback. I've done many activities in class where students don't participate. They sit, they say, I don't want to do it this way. Two things with that. Don't let that stop you. Keep going. Because if you stop, you're communicating to the students that this really isn't the best way. It's really not that important. So keep going. But also tell the students, Ben, I see that you're not doing this. Let me explain to you why we're doing it this way instead of the way we have been doing it. Let me tell you that if you get to this answer on your own, if you create a question on your own, you're going to retain it better. So don't just do an activity and say, oh, Ben's not participating he's going to miss out, really explain it to that student because it is it feels scary and so they need to know that it's really going to help them reach out better. So don't give up and get into that conversation. So I just wanted to make that comment and I know Jamie has okay. more to go on to. And we're going to get right into yeah. an enduring issue. So this will be a good example. Okay, so just um, wrapping that up, you've got to leave the students time for their own discovery and exploration. And they have to know, as Ben was saying before, struggle is good. They just have to keep telling them. If I gave you something you already knew, why would you be coming to class every day? You've got to struggle with it. Um, and all of this, of course, is not the subject of this um, particular workshop, but that's what critical thinking is, right? Um, if you're here or if you've heard a lot about the depth of knowledge, this is what they need to be able to do.